lowering the blood pressure reduces the risk of almost all fish and shellfish. They contain traces of... Have you ever wondered, like, what also mercury really does to your nervous system? You have most likely heard that eating fish twice a day week is beneficial. Is that true? A lot of people are skeptical about fish. I will talk about the best and the worst fish to consume, especially if you have conditions such as obesity, insulin resistance, or diabetes. Hi everyone, I am Dr. Ahmed Ergin, a metabolism specialist and your go-to endocrinologist on YouTube. Fish, particularly oily varieties, contain heart and brain healthy omega-3 fats, in addition to being a good source of protein. So fish and selfish are essential in our healthy diet, especially for diabetic diet. So fish and shellfish, they're high in protein and other essential nutrients such as the omega-3 and their low in saturated fat. And as you know, a balanced diet that includes a variety that includes the fish can help with your heart and the proper growth and development of the children. So numerous nutritional benefits are there, especially for diabetics and patients with insulin resistance should all consider eating fish. Now, what's the catch? We'll get to that. The main benefit is, as we said, is omega-3. But let's remember what good things come from the omega-3 fatty acids. So lowering the blood pressure is important. Why? Because lowering the blood pressure reduces the risk of sudden death, the heart attacks, irregular heart rhythms, and stroke. Even during pregnancy, you can help your baby's vision and the brain and the nerve growth and the optimal brain development when you're eating omega-3. Now, what else? The depression, the Alzheimer's disease, the oldest dementia, and even diabetes may all be prevented or get better. For example, type 1 diabetes is an autoimmune disease. It's different, different than type 2 diabetes, right? That occurs when your immune system basically assaults your healthy components in your pancreatic beta cells. Now, studies show that actually consuming omega-3 fatty acids, such as the oil that is found in the fish, prevent developing of type 1 diabetes, especially in children and young adults. So, omega-3 fatty acids have the potential to also decrease the symptoms of arthritis while also preventing the inflammation. So what else do we have? Vitamin D, right? So vitamin D is similar to a steroid hormone in your body. And guess what? 41% of the US population are deficient in vitamin D, either extremely deficient or somewhat deficient. Well, unfortunately, there are some disadvantages to eating fish on a regular basis. So as you know, the pollutants such as mercury and polychlorinated biphenyls, they end up in our drinking water and, of course, fish as a result of the waste that we generate in our own homes and workplaces. Almost all fish and shellfish, they contain traces of mercury. The risk of mercury poisoning from eating fish and shellfish is not a health concern for the majority of the people. However, some fish and selfish contain higher levels of mercury, which may harm the nervous system, which you don't want to have, especially with diabetes and neuropathy problems. So the risks posed by mercury in fish and shellfish are determined by the amount of fish <laughs> that you consume and also the levels of the mercury in those fish. So as a result, the Food and Drug Administration, as you know, the FDA in the United States and the Environmental Protection Agency, they are advising that women, for example, who may become pregnant or, or pregnant women already in the second or third trimester or nursing mothers and young children should avoid certain types of fish and instead eat lower mercury fish and shellfish, and we'll talk about them one by one. There's also that issue of environmental impact, which we sometimes cause without knowing. So unfortunately, sustainability of the seafood is a problem. 
Many of us are perplexed when it comes to fish, like what's best for me, what's good for the environment, and so forth, if you are environmentally conscious. Have you ever wondered, like, what also mercury really does to your nervous system? Most of us, like, are scared of things without knowing what really does, right? So, but the methyl mercury poisoning, for example, you will have symptoms if you are poisoned. You may have, like, inability to see clearly from a distance. You may have hearing loss. You may have hand, foot, and mouth numbness, burning and tingling like pins and needles. Speech and hearing problems can happen. Even walking can be affected. So it's all about the nervous system problems. Also, lack of strength in your muscles and fatigue are common. So I have some recommendations for you before we have a deep dive into this. Number one, avoid eating shark, swordfish, king mackerel, and tilefish. Why? because they are very high in mercury. Number two, I would say consume up to 12 ounces, which is, you know, average uh, a week to average meal a week of mercury-free fish and shellfish. Now, shrimp, for example, or canned light tuna, salmon, pollock, and catfish are five of the most commonly consumed mercury-free fish. So, consume more of those. Albacore fish, for example, white tuna and some other popular fish contain more mercury than the canned light tuna, for example. So when choosing your two fish or your shellfish meals per week, you can eat an up to six ounces on average per meal or a little bit more maybe of albacore tuna. Number three, check your local advisories on the safety of the fish caught by the family and friends in your area, in your lakes and rivers or coastal areas, because you never know what the advice is there, if the advice is available, of course. And I wouldn't eat more than six ounces of that fish if it is caught in local parks and rivers, etc. And I would say don't eat any other fish if you don't know that they're really safe for you in that week. So also, if you're feeding that fish to your child, follow the same guidelines, but I would say serve them definitely smaller portions. So what fish should you eat then, right? What fish should you not eat at all? So let's go one by one, and I'll start with the sardines. I know it's not very common, but it can be found in can form. It's very high in vitamin D and calcium and omega-3. There's a lot of nutrients in sardines. In addition to that, the wild-caught salmon is preferred over other fish. And I would say, like when I say other fish, other farmed salmon, for example. So the wild salmon, for example, contains a lot of omega-3, just like sardines and vitamins, like vitamin D, and very little saturated fat. So both farmed and wild fish, unfortunately, are still susceptible to contaminants from the water they swim in and the food they consume and the health benefits of both wild and farmed salmon though still outweigh the risk because sometimes all you can afford is a farmed salmon and i would definitely prefer that over some other high saturated fat content in other animal meats for example contaminant levels in the farmed salmon feeds are currently being subject to like pretty strict regulations. So in recent years, these changes have resulted in lower contaminants in the farmed fish as well. So you can probably now consume those a little bit more peace of mind compared to, let's say, 10 years ago. Now, we talked about the sardines, but herring is also another one that is very similar to sardines, and they're very oily and they have plethora of nutritional benefits. Sardines are also high in calcium and the herring. They are high in iron, selenium, um, B12, and so forth. Despite the fact that people can consume sardines fresh, they are, like I said, either found in canned or frozen, but get them wherever you find them. They're extremely beneficial and nutritional value is very high and very low contaminants and very high in omega-3. People who also eat canned sardines should check the label uh, to see how much also extra oil or sodium they add into them. So you have to be careful about that when you're buying anything canned. Still consume in moderation and canned tuna is typically safe to consume. But still, you may want to limit the 
content of how much you're eating because eventually it may add up. Now, white tuna, also known as albacore, has a greater mercury concentration than the light tuna, for example. Uh, so you just need to make your pick there as well. Now, fatty fish like tuna has fewer calories and a lot of nutrients, like, like the protein, similar to salmon. Skipjack tuna, for example, has 22 grams of protein in a 100 gram serving, which is great. And then mackerel, for example, is a solid white fish with a robust flavor that is uh, often served raw as well in sashimi or sushi. It also has a lot of omega-3 in them and B12, then some other forms of fish. But pickled or smoked mackerel, be careful, may have higher salt level than the fresh mackerel. So uh, people with high blood pressure should look out for that information on the food labels before they consume that. So the fish that are smaller in size, such as the Atlantic or Spanish mackerel, are definitely preferable because the larger fish, like king mackerel, will have more mercury levels and therefore is going to be less healthy to consume. Now, what else? Let's talk about trout. So rainbow trout, also known as steelhead trout. And this fish is one of the best fish to eat if it is farmed carefully in the United States or in indoor circulating tanks, according to the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch. When compared to canned or the pink salmon, Trout has more potassium, more selenium, more vitamin B6, and more than a day's worth of vitamin B12, which is important for diabetic neuropathy and so forth we discussed before. The halibut is a great tasting solid fish. White fish has a mild flavor. You can enjoy it raw or cooked. People who do not appreciate the fish, but if you want to include a fish that has mild flavor, definitely a halibut will be in your list. It has around 19 grams of protein per 100 grams of that flesh, and it has a lot of potassium and vitamin D. So what are the worst fish that you should never eat? Well, number one, swordfish. Well, swordfish species are regarded from an ecological perspective because of the high quantities of mercury, I would say you can swap that out with wild Alaskan salmon or farmed Atlantic halibut. How about that? There is also a lot of mercury in Chilean sea bass. I know it tastes great, but eating it more than three times a month is definitely gonna catch up with you. Another one that you have to be extremely careful is the orange fish, that is orange raffi, sometimes they call it. From a sustainability standpoint and a mercury content, it is also not too great. They are among the worst fish to eat. They can live up to 150 years, which is like a huge long time to be eating poisons from the ocean, right? I mean, come on, that's too much mercury in them. Instead, I would say eat tilapia, for example, that has low mercury content and it's very inexpensive. Number three, that may be also on your watch, although you may love the taste, is the grouper. According to the Monterey Bay Aquarium Seafood Watch website, they list no varieties of grouper in its best option category. So it's best to avoid it if you care about the environment as well. Instead, I would try maybe Bronzino, a Mediterranean fish grown in indoor recirculating tanks. Again, you have to be careful about where you're buying from, but they have a low mercury content and you are free to consume up to six times a month without feeling guilty there. Now, King mackerel is also is another horrible one. It is very high in mercury, although it is sustainable but you have to be able to contain your portions and eat maybe not more than once a month. On the other hand, Atlantic Spanish mackerel has minimal mercury levels and extremely sustainable, and I would say that would be both tasty and environmentally friendly as well. So guys, I hope this helped you, and if it did, remember to give a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you are enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, 
watch this video right there, I think that will help you too.